go back to a different time, 2015 to 2016, when the Lego group gifted us with a awesome new theme, Ultra Agents, a spiritual successor to the 2008 Agents theme, which, well, we loved as kids. We will be ranking every single Ultra Agent sets from 1 to 14 and going really deep dive down to the grain in depth because that's what Daniel Leo and I do. How are you feeling today, Buster? Oh, uh, is that my villain nickname? Or I'm feeling really great about this. Uh, I love all of the Lego original action adventure themes. And this is a very unique one because it follows up on a, the beloved original Agents theme. And while we didn't have in, any of these when these came out, we did pick up some of them in the time since, and we've done in-depth research on the ones that we haven't interacted with in person so that this can be a fairly fair assessment. But as always with any sort of ranking, it's very subjective and very curious if you had any of these, if your ranking would change based on your build and play experience. Going up with number 14, it's Toxic Ketus Toxic Meltdown. The reason that this gets the final last spot is probably for the fact that, well, what is going on with this helicopter? It's hard to identify any focal points here. Color scheme is fine. The side build is abysmal. Can we get these facade side builds out of here? I know this was in 2014, but that's still no excuse for this kind of shoddy behavior. Get these midi figures out of my face as well, because these mini figures are quite mid. Nah, Methuselah is right. There is no redeeming factors to these mini figs, except that Toxikita turns out to be a Ninjago character. A couple of little fun features here and there, but otherwise, nothing too exciting about it. But we're going on to number 13, which is the Riverside Raid. It's kind of cute, and it's a little deceiving because it's a little ATV, but it also turns into a jet ski. Basically, a jet ski just comes off the top, and that is very fun, and you can even hook the winch onto the little crates and everything. So for a very small budget set, you get exclusive fig, the Atom Acid, as well as a very malleable split function vehicle. Uh, not bad for a lower price point set in all honesty. I don't hate it. I love the villain figure. Number 12, a little bit of an upgrade. The Ultrasonic Showdown. It comes with Professor Brainstein as a pretty dope villain. But the one thing about me, just I'm going to clear the air real quickly, is I love super villains and I love superheroes. That's what makes the set so fun and funner than the original Agents theme is the zany super villains. Dr. Brainstein is pretty dope in his quad-legged side build. The jet I'm sure there's some sort of features going on with it, but it's just not that enticing. Yeah, there's really not much more going on here except the turrets rotate, and that's basically it. So you're really coming here for the figure, which also happens to be the most expensive Ultra Agents minifig, costing upwards of like 70 US dollars new. We have Invisible Gold Getaway, which is kind of bizarre because this guy's not really invisible. He is, does have a semi-see-through head. But otherwise, there's not a lot really going on here either, except for the very Tron light cycle inspired bike, which kind of transforms into a drone-like flyer. But otherwise, you know, it's, it's serviceable. Conflict in a box. Yeah, it's interesting. It's a unique concept with the cowboy invisible figure with the invisible jet or whatever. It's just not very cohesive. Is this theme just mid overall? That's my main question, and I guess we'll determine throughout this video. Uh, maybe we'll see why it was canceled after just two short waves. Our number 10 pick would be Antimatter's Portal Hideout. It's zany. I think it ranks higher than the other ones because it's a unique set. You don't see a lot of LEGO sets like this where it's sort of a suspended oil rig type on above water dock. That's really unique and different. However, there's just not a lot going on. Would this look good on your shelf? No, does it have to look good on your shelf? Maybe. If you're a kid, probably not. It really has you have to get the other set with this one which is the big boat set or else it really won't make that much sense just by itself so for that reason they're going to hit the number 10 spot and it seems like the entire premise of the set is built around just this claw and cage where you can put the cage on the boat you can put the cage on the portal in the trap door and that's basically it the best part though is the jumbo robo cyber shark that is awesome what is our number nine pick hurricane heist which is one that i did have some years ago i picked that up and the best part about it is that you can turn the knob on the top and all of those big fans blades spin together which is really cool and it's a very complex feature and it basically is the whole premise of the set probably one of the only things i like about it that in the actual cyclone minifig which has a completely exclusive kind of a paratrooper air force type apparatus but otherwise it's just very confusing what this is is it a mac is it a plane can it can transform into both but it's not 
doesn't do any one thing well, I would say. Right. It's kind of giving Exoforce vibes a little bit, but Daniel was correct in the fact that it's hard to identify exactly what the vehicle is being a unique and fictional vehicle, which is pretty cool, but you're still trying to identify exactly what's going on. I love how the minifigure matches the set. There's a, I love the theming of that. It's really cool. The good guy minifigures is just nothing, cra nothing crazy. And I think that kind of goes for the entirety of the wave. You get these cool super villains, but then you get these kind of mid good guy figures. So what's stopping you from just getting a Lego Marvel or Lego DC set where you get both? Number eight has to go to Agent Stealth Patrol. Toxikita's back, and this time in a cute little stubby mini mech. I'm actually kind of a fan of that side build. Uh, she does have a really unique shoulder pads piece as well. I really wish I had that piece. This car is really cool because it has working uh, elastic suspension, and you have a, a cage that pops off and everything. One of the really cool things is the harpoon gun. It's kind of a string on one of the spring on one of the spring loaded launchers. Mm. That's pretty awesome. So all of that packed into just a really fun uh, two person car. It's really cool. The other interesting thing about this is that this ser serves as Professor Brainstein's villain origin story because Toxikita comes, kidnaps him. You can see him on the right here, and he turns into the cybernetic freak that we saw earlier. Okay, number seven goes to Drillix Diamond Job. Okay, I think you actually mean. Axel's Rumble Maker, or am I just mixing uh, that up? Well, this really paved the way for Axel's Rumble Maker. Um, and also the Underminer from freaking Incredibles paved the way for this. So it all just <laughs> derives from that. The figure himself is kind of derpy. Let's be honest, not the best villain figure. The tank is really cool. You can definitely tell it's a mine, mining tank. The rotations, dual rotation on the two drills is super dope. It's a really cool build. Number six. Okay. <laughs> Who put the Spyclops in... Oh my gosh. Daniel Leo, did you put the Spyclops infiltration on number six? Oh, um, I don't think I would have put it this high, but I'm curious to see why you did. Okay, I'm sorry, Jane Bricks, but is this not just the dopest little set? Okay, <laughs> look at this minifigure Spyclops. Uh, he's half cyborg, spider-themed, as, a, you know, robotic spider legs coming out from his back. He's like a graffiti... More of a street level villain, nothing crazy like freaking Max Ghost Phantasm or whatever. And I really like how his build is really cohesive with his minifigure. It looks really dope for a street level, level figure. Yes, the legs don't move. I don't care about that. I would almost want to army build these as well. I love how these looks. I love how the colors go together. And I think it's a very cute, affordable, friendly, wholesome set featuring a vandalizing supervillain. Great points. I, I agree. Now, what are we in the top five now? Daniel? What is our number five pick? Okay, so there's maybe a little bit of a deja vu for the original Agents fan, but we have the Agents Mission HQ. It's back and better than ever in some ways. Basically, it has all of the things from the original, whether you have the semi truck cab and back, along with a bunch of little vehicles that you can pop out of it. But it's, it feels a little like there's a little too much messiness going on in this one than the previous one. A little less features as far as there's no light brick with the Doctor Inferno screen or anything. You still have some of that, but not doesn't while it is more kind of robust looking, especially the front, it doesn't quite live up to the standard that the original set. I feel like we had to put this one up there just because it's the second biggest one out of a theme where you don't have a lot of big sets. Hey, it's kind of an auto top five. Personally, I really dislike it. I think it's a copy of the original, but kind of worse. Especially the minifigure selection is basically 50% worse. It only comes with one villain. It comes with four other good guys, which don't aren't way mind-blowing. I feel like the original Ultra Agents Command Center was just 10 times better. And it did all, everything, all this, and it was years and years ago. So, and when you close this thing up, it's just plain black on the side. No detail, just straight up black panels. Not a big fan of this one. Is it a cool semi-truck? Yeah, the front is really cool, but is it a cool Ultra Agent set? No, something that is a cool Ultra Agent set is our number four pick, the Tremor Track Infiltration. Special shout out to Tremor. He gets the number one super villain of Ultra Agents awarded by me and Daniel Ewa and Daniel Ewa and I. Look at this chrome plated dopest molded custom minifigure. Is that not the dopest thing you've seen? Not only that, it's matched perfectly with his tank, which has like military style treads, military style tank and a dope feature of chrome-plated fist punching to punch these Ultra Agent noobs back to where they came from. I think this kind of perfectly captures the zaniness that it feels like the designers were going for with the Ultra Agents villains as a whole, where you have kind of these over-the-top wacky villains with weird powers. 
with some related uh, vehicle, like with Drillex and his drills or Tremor and his punching. But this one executes it all perfectly. And this is only $20, which is awesome for everything that you get here with the minifigs and the actual punching feature, tank, everything. And even a safe, like it's a side build that actually makes sense in the context of the set where you can use the punching action of the tank to open up the safe and get out the stops. Number three pick, Ultracopter versus Antimatter. Oh no, the big villain. Okay, Daniel, why is this our number third pick? So one, it does have the really cool big villain, but also this kind of takes the original helicopter from Agents where, and a lot of these sets are kind of rehashes and updates of the original Agent sets, but it kind of gives it a, a fresh paint of coat a fresh coat of paint, a bunch of features. You have all the different weapons that can move forward, out, you can position things, drop people down, move all of the the rotors and everything. It's, there's just nothing wrong with it, you know? But that takes to our number two, Ultra Agents Ocean HQ. You might have thought this would have been the number one, but it's actually the number two. This is takes the original agent steam and elevates it to a new level. We didn't ever saw anything like this, and it's a really cool spy boat, cool villain minifigure, and a lot of uniqueness to it just overall yeah i agree the fact that you can actually open that garage door transfer the garage door on the top and put the, all the guns down bring them out you have other little side uh, vehicles that you can bring out of the boat or put them back in when i think of it, ultra agents this i think of two sets this is one of them we'll get to the next one in a sec but the villain itself is also really cool kind of like a basically lego's bootleg version of electro from spider-man mm. and you have actually two villain characters and four bad guys so a little outnumbered here but still very cool set and it pairs very nicely with the anti-matters hideout that brings us to our final choice for the number one ultra agent set rest in peace ultra agents which will be i'll go ahead and announce it the inferno interception guys why did you pick this one it's not as big as the ocean hq it's not as big as the mobile command center it's not as detailed well here's a big surprise for all the a falls out there you don't need a big set to have an amazing set. This singular set encapsulates the whole theme in a great way, and we think the best way, which would be agents, futuristic agents versus super villains. Look how dope this car build is here, as well as look how cool this villain minifigure in Fear Note is here. I love his little side build of a surfboard because it fits him so well. His back bling with the canisters, super dope, dropping dynamite on you. What about this car here? That's pretty legit. It's really legit, and it looks beautiful. Just the right amount of the transparent blue with the retro space discs on the wheels. Very cool. Unique shaping and a bunch of features packed in, including spring-loaded shooters that can pop out that you can shoot out of the back, as well as an ejector seat. You can put Solomon Blaze from Galaxy Squad, appearing again here, into the car and like literally eject him out, shoot stuff, cool minifig. It's just... It's the most solid package. Affordability is a plus in my book, not a minus. Overall, Ultra Agents, as a theme in retrospect, how are we feeling about this? I'm just going to go ahead and say my piece briefly. I feel like the reason that it didn't succeed is because it's doing two separate things, which is super secret spies and super villains. And I think those are different themes. It is cool to have them in one set, but I think thematically, those go differently like with the original agents they're fighting more of a super spy organization with their super spy organization which makes a little bit more sense uh because if you want to get super villains i would rather spend my 30 dollars on getting a legitimate marvel sandman figure but that's just me yeah i totally agree with what you said it is does feel like two different themes and it is kind of sad to see also when uh lego's trying to do things that aren't ip related but they're in clearly inspired by ips that then cannibalize these themes so now we have a lot more marvel superheroes so we're not going to see sets with kind of these super villain type ideas one thing that hampers it is the whole app integration maybe it's because we, we don't have a lot of nostalgia for it because we weren't necessarily kids when this is coming out and if you were a kid when this came, came out let us know if you feel like this very strong nostalgia for this because that does often change how we feel about things you know we love power miners some people don't the final note that i want to say would be the following there you go there is still space for original themes, and I believe. there. I know it's hard to do a space theme because we have Star Wars. I know it's hard to do superheroes when we have Marvel and DC. I know, but there is. You have to be more creative than before. There is still no super spies, you know, Slego sets. 
there's rarely any castle sets. Yeah, we could do Lord of the Rings or whatever or Harry Potter, but there is room for something. Just get more creative instead of less creative. So yeah, let us know. Ultra Agents 1 through 10. Did you like it? Did you have any sets? And we'll, we'll, we will do this with any single theme. We're going to do Chima. We're going to do any single theme. We will rank everything. We will rate anything LEGO related. We will rate every LEGO theme. We will rate every LEGO minifigure. So <laughs> please let us know down in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, please super smash that like button. And subscribe to this video. And without further ado, Happy New Year, all. Have a great one.